the Lord and greatly to be praised. Jehovah God, your greatness is unmatched. The fact that when we walk, our both feet are not on the ground simultaneously is an attestation of your greatness. Having placed the sun 93 million miles from earth is another indication of your greatness. Allowing us to breathe only oxygen when the air is filled with so many poisonous gases is another indication of how great thou art this morning. We affirm your greatness. We want to thank you this morning for the life of Henry, one that you brought into this world. And I believe he did that which he was created to do. And you saw it fit to have called him. Here we are from different backgrounds. Gather together in this new house to celebrate this life. We thank you for your presence that is upon us. And the signs remind us in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We pray that this presence will continue to permeate and saturate this atmosphere. We thank you for those who are very close to Henry. We know there are those who did not be and they are now sorrowful. But I'm glad you are still our refuge. You are still our strength and you are still our present help in the time of trouble. So I pray right now that you undergird and underpin the bereaved family and as we celebrate this life May we be cognizant of the fact that it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. So as we celebrate Henry's life, may we look in our lives and see how we are living and make our coming an election sure. Bless the remaining portion of the Thanksgiving exercise and may everything continue. In decent city order, we pray and tell the dance. So in Jesus' precious name, we taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us, and we must not be the temptation. But deliver us of all evils, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 We seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, with me um, today are four of my spiritual sons from the words of the job, Deacon Colbert and Keyword, and St. Deacon St. Alan Sires is um, beside me. I'm not going to sit behind me. He's beside me. Yeah. So I have an option to moderate. So at this time, I'm going to turn the program into the cable now of the consoles. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yeah. As you come, the other ones are giving after the welcome was given. So I will do an excellent welcome to everybody as we celebrate the life of Henry. This is a program resident for the sanctuary. We are not governed by stringent not being good. We are governed by biblical principles. The only thing we ask of those who share the space with us to be our best behavior. Because God is not the author of confusion, but it was done most of them with decency and honor. God bless you, such a sad day. Thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I too just want to give this opportunity to express my sincere and condolence and sympathy to the Montes family. 
And I know that in a time like this is not easy for some, we just see it as a life just passed away, but there are some in the family that is not taking it well. But today I just want to encourage you that from you have the Lord with you, you can take it well. Amen. And he's there to stand with you, to give you courage, to give you strength in the time of weakness. Say that I got somebody with me to share my heavy load. And feel his presence near me every day.
You've been carrying the burden for years, for days, for months. And Brother I want to remind you today, the altar is here. You don't have to carry it anymore. You don't have to bring it anymore. You are passed from year 2022, and now you are still now in 23. And you are carrying that burden from 2020, even until 2023. It's time to let it go. Let it go. The altar is here. Be encouraged, my friend. God bless that will be done by Kendra, that's Kendra, uncle, right? That is granddaughter, granddaughter. And um, after that, we will have an item, Praise My Soul. And after Kendra, that will do the second lesson. I will call that person to do Praise My Soul. Amen? Distracted. 
Our parents did not have to badger many to study. He loved school and always and was always on top of his class. He always encouraged Vincent, who was not with us anymore, and I to study. He had to make sure that we did our homework and knew our timetable. He would sometimes threaten us when we were late for school. Ben was very successful in both first and secondary exams. However, after the However, he opted out of the third year exam, thinking he was not ready for it. However, after the exam, he cried when he saw the papers, knowing that he would have easily passed the exam. Ken was never an adventurous one. As boys, we were responsible for gathering fire property as we had no gas for pocket. It was a joy to do that, as it was an opportunity to get out of the yard. We would often stop at Fall River to take a swim, not Kenya. He would not go in the water. When Vincent and I would go on breaking from Jackson's property, Penny would not partake of it because he did not get permission to take it from the field. Penny loved nature. He always had a vegetable garden and raised chickens. He would proudly root these crops such as pumpkin, palo, and beans, which were used in everyday meat preparation. Mom would look forward to getting a chicken to cook many Sundays, not to mention the roots that was always reserved for holidays. The neighbors were never left out either. Mama loved to share and Henry would be of pride when she would explain that these were Henry's friends. Henry was very ambitious and had his color in his heart. After graduating school, he was employed in various places and even became involved in the political movement before migrating to Canada in 1976. He had a very successful life in Canada. I still remember with pride when Ken invited me to visit him in Canada in the early 80s. It was my first time traveling abroad and I was excited. I got to meet his family, some of his friends, and even co workers. He took me to some interesting places that I can still even remember in Niagara Falls. Ken accepted the Lord of God in Canada. As a Christian, he embraced revivalism. On his return to Jamaica in 1997, he was not afraid to share with others and to invite them to Christ. On April 22, 2001, he was ordained as a minister of religion in the Bethel Zion Church of God. Penny traveled to various parishes, preaching, teaching, and encouraging people to accept the Lord. He would oftentimes be in his brightly colored turbans, rap style, and embellished in a variety of ways. In 2015, he was featured in Guinea, where he was interviewed about his revival turban. And him always had a feeling of that in his attached case. Penny was a good communicator. He was very well learned. You could never all talk him in any discussion involving current affairs, religion, politics, and nutrition. He would always emphasize the importance of taking vitamins and eating fruits and vegetables. He would often tell of the days when he would promote supplements and shapes and how many people benefited from them. He would love to read. He read the newspaper as it was a book and would often times cut out articles for future discussions or research. Most Saturdays and Sunday afternoons, when he stopped by on his way from church, it was never a dull moment. We had to brace ourselves to a healthy dose of chatter in any or all of these topics mentioned about and he never disappointed me. I will certainly miss my brother. I leave you with a quote. May the road rise up to meet him. May the wind be always by his back. May the sun shine warm upon his face. The rain fall soft upon his fields. Until we meet again, may God hold him in the palm of his hands. Rest in my brother. Amen. Amen. That's the life of Minister Henry Hunter. That was his brother's experience with his brother. And no doubt, they have a lot more persons that tell out their story uh, with their encounter with Mr. Hunter. The second two it will be done by Hyacinth Hunter. That will be the wife. I think this, this one should be the first to it, but I don't know, but those who made a robot because she's the first lady. But 
and now call him Ayesin Unto. And after Ayesin Unto would have done her, her chibu, we will have a poem by Maria Oates. Is the wife here? The wife? Oh. Okay, so I will now call on um, Mario Boots, who, who will be doing his trip. And after Mario Boots, we will call on uh, Errol Hunter, that's the brother, for the fourth trip. Another brother from the same mother, am I right? Am I right? Good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, let me pay my respects to the family and close friends. May your faith and your love in each other keep you strong. This poem is entitled, Not Here. Here you are, here you are, lying there but not here with us. A lingering memory, a wandering thought. Here you are, but not here with us. Present in the legacy you built, now like a passing monument in our lives. Here you are, here you are. We heard your laugh, we felt your warmth. Oh, we reveled in the joy you brought. We shouldered pain with you, we saw tears flow. Oh, we cried and saw the truth. Now here you are, now here you are, and here you are, lying there, resting, sleeping, going home, but not here with us, and here we are, here we are. Thank you. Amen. Mr. Booth, we thank you for that lovely I mean, poem. So now we have um, Errol Hunter, that's the brother. And after Mr. Errol Hunter would have done his boot, we have um, Patsy Clark, that's the cousin. And at number six, we have an open tribute. And uh, we'll give one person the opportunity to come and tell of their story about Mr. Hunter, so one person. And I don't know who that one person will be, but we are going to have a rat race who will come to the mind first. But we are just give one person that opportunity. So Mr. Errol, it's your turn. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. I guess my brother might have said it all in a nutshell, but I still have to I guess my brother has said most of it in a nutshell. Yeah. But I still have to make my little addition to this wonderful man. Henry, as he was commonly called, Brother Henry, by the family. Because in those days, based on the family respect, you couldn't just say Henry or Rob. You have to have something to do. This man had taught me so much. He has assisted me in my grooming in making me what I am today. Henry was a teacher. He was a father figure. When dad wasn't around, you could always rely on Henry. He was always there. In this, he taught us and our siblings about values and attitude. And this has assisted more than all of us in what we are today. And he was a man who would have given his all to people at the detriment of himself. Not knowing where food or what would have come for him to come But he wanted to ensure that everybody was satisfied and okay. I remember in 1976, I was just around nine years old at the time. After the 1976 general election, um, he was about to migrate to Canada. I was only nine years old. 
I remember going through the long time New Testament Church of God um, Bible, the small red Bible. I remember giving everyone. And I remember saying to him when he was going up, go with God. When he came back to Jamaica in 1997, I guess, he took back that little Bible with him. And he looked at me and said to me, when you gave me this Bible, you gave me a message. He said that he didn't know what he was saying to me, right? But he said, when I realized God was using you to tell me something, and from that day, his path of life was changed. Right? So, Brother Henry, Father, friend, may your soul rest in peace. Amen. last few 
years of his life serving others and serving his God. He told everybody about the Jesus he knew. Ah, that's what God. God is good. I can go on forever, but I'm not going to. Because I think you get the gist of Henry. Henry walked with God. And God saw that Henry was getting tired. And God said, Henry, you're closer to my home than your home. Why don't you come home with me? So Henry went home to be with his Lord and Savior. I want to say we're not grieving the dead. We're here to celebrate his life. Henry would want us to be crying and mourning because he knew who he was, what he was, what, is, what, what he was called to do. So, for anyone here who don't know Jesus as your personal savior, Henry would love you to know, come to know Jesus. Just, that's the only way you can see him again because he's with his Jesus. He's with his maker. So on that note, I'm going to end. I'm going to say, sleep on, brother. Take your rest. Can we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. So today I want to, on behalf of my family, to express comments to the Hunter's family, and especially to my cousin Melissa. You've heard the past speaker spoke about, she's my cousin, and so I drove all the way from Ireland to be here to give them some support. And I also met Mr. Hunter, a name that is widespread in Clarendon, having worked with the National Works Agency, because that's where I work as a police for 10 years. And um, since I left into the left to Manila headquarters, but uh, it's never easy to lose a loved one. And so I would have listened to all the speakers before, and I know for sure that Mr. Henry was a man of God. And so today, even as we mourn, we are important that we mourn, but to know that he's resting in the arms of Jesus. And so one of these side days, if we only live as he does, then we will meet him again. And so I want to do a song, trusting and hoping that it will comfort our hearts here too. Well, oh, in the spirit, Oh, no. 
And I know it take 15 minutes of your time to share from a portion that was read by Esther. It was already this morning. Um, the, the girl, the very shy, like to run away from the primary school girl, <laughs> told me in that investigation revealed she was not Esther. She's Esther. So I told her that I love it. Yeah. Where is the guy and the family? Mr. Hunter, who guides trainers of well, and he does trail very well. So I know the family quite. Amen? You know the family quite. So when they asked me, even though I had done an operation about a month ago, I would have, I would have turned around and concentrated. I'm happy I came. Amen? Amen. 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 I love when we come in that is in the presence of God. Yes. So God is with us. So I hope tomorrow morning I will preach again. And I preached last night at the men's conference. They asked me to speak on conformed, transformed, and renewed. So today I want to share just briefly from the first lesson that was read. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and uh, I want to read just verse 18 to utilize my time as best as possible but what I'm going to say will be found in verses just a moment could you kindly call it back out of funeral service thank you I should have read from verses 13 to 18, but I'll just read verse 18. But what I'm going to say will can be found from verse 13 to 18. Verses 18 at first, just a um, I am at a funeral service. Could you kindly call me back within the next hour or so? Thank you very much. And the person heard no. <laughs> Wherefore, comfort one another with these sayings. Father, bless your servant, the word of your people. We pray in Christ's name. There are a lot of questions that are being asked in regards to the aftermath. Job asks this pertinent question in Job 14 and verse 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? So in the New Testament, in Thessalonica, this church founded and developed by the Apostle Paul, the brethren were very concerned about the same death of death. Those who would have died as Christians. When a man dies, is it over? How do you answer a question as it relates to eternal destination? You can answer all the questions that I have rhetorically asked by consulting the Bible. You see, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Jehovah is the creator of every one of us. And you know that everything that has been invented, made, that it which is made, many times the purchaser especially who purchases a phone gets a manual am i right i was told that the word manual are two words manual maker you are mind so a manual is really the maker's mind all that the purchaser 
begin to manual. This phone has more than 40 features, but sometimes we read and embrace only four. Amen. So everything that ought to be known about hell, about heaven, about death, about life, about where the Christian goes after death are documented in this manual. So in, in Thessalonica, the brethren were concerned what happened after a man of God would have died as Henry who was transitioned from the earthly realm into another world. So Paul began in verse 13 in trying to comfort the heart of the brethren at Thessalonica and he said, but I will not have you ignorant brethren. Some people say, ignorant you know. And he said, ignorant means not knowing. So Paul said, I will not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that he shall not even as others which have no hope. So Paul said they died. So I don't want to not to know what happened after they have died. The so Paul reminded them first of all how they were saved, how they established a relationship with God. So, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, this is the gospel according to Romans. Uh, first Corinthians 16 verse 1 Jesus was born died buried and rose again so if you believe that Jesus died uh, and he died uh, not because he was a common criminal he recognized uh, that if he had not died uh, you and I could never be redeemed for he was the spotless uh, sinless uh, Lord God uh, who was crucified uh, once for your redemption and mine. So if you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. People establish a relationship to God by joining a church. God has not called us to religion or church membership. He has caused us, called us to relationship. And in light of what I heard, Henry had a relationship with God. It is only a relationship that you would have had with God that will motivate you to tell somebody about the God that changed you. 42 years ago, I ran the streets of Port Rand, smoking my chalice and all grade and kind of ganja are my one. But 1980, I came in contact with the Savior of this world. His name is Jesus. He has revolutionized my life. And what I am today can only be attributed to the Lord. that we which 
the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So we believe as a church, as a Christian, that those who died in Christ when the rapture would have taken place are the first resurrection the dead in Christ will rise first. In other words, those who are serving Christ now as every day and would have died when the trump of God would have sounded, they will rise first. <laughs> I am reminded that we switch verse 16 for the Lord himself. So everybody is saying, Lord, no one is saying, Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> the Lord, no, no, I love the definite article that modify Lord. The Lord means that there is one Lord. <laughs> I am the pastor of a poor and Wesleyan Holiness Church. The implication is there is not another pastor. The Lord, who is the Lord? The other day I heard Paul writing to the Philippian brethren in Philippians 2 9, 10, and 11. For God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above all other names. That every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, who is the Lord, who is the Lord, somebody call his name, who is the Lord. Jesus is not a figment of imagination, the only name that will chase demon out of your bathroom, from out of your veranda, out of your bedroom. The only name when it is caught from the lips of those who are sanctified and redeemed cause a demon to tremble. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out demon. It is the name that saves. It is the name that brings peace. It is the name that brings help. It is the name. Oh, <sighs> 
I'm like, well, she might put her money to the over here. Tell her I'm so doing that. But I was like, man, you're always thinking of putting her out in the middle of the room. I said, I'm like, There comes a time where we have to say enough. Yeah, man. And the third of you will be about 64. And I'll have that as a young man. We don't look young man, you know that. Yeah. But there was a time when I gave my life to Christ when I was 20, 21. But I have spoken to men, I have seen men, women live their lives recklessly. They never even live to be my age. Come down. I remember we become victims of our lifestyle. Live and live for somebody. I, I was so happy when Roy said, his brother taught him so many things. And unless he taught you, may you who you are today. Brother, I love that. I love that. So he must have done something that you as a family member can take a leave. Or to the spoke. Who will be the enemy in the family? Who will assume the role? to be the standard bearer of the family. So we to have come today to celebrate his life. But may I remind you, one of these days, somebody will celebrate our lives. Will we be able to see? Can I know when people are telling you? Eh? And some people, ah, 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 ah. When people say, oh, I'm sure. And down from the heart, you know, your spirit. So I'm challenging today, brothers and sisters. Remember, let us have the finality of life. And everybody, I'm going to put this way, every part of life, is the eternal destiny. It's true. Amen. Amen. And I want you today, I repeat myself for emphasis, and we celebrate your brothers. If you have done anything to hurt your mother, your brother, your wife, your husband, you know, sometimes you can't feel like a bad, you know, especially the soul bites. Then they can tell you what's wrong with you. You know, I am not Scottish, I am cool now. And I knew my father, Esther, when I was 40. So it's around me and making, you know. So, when I met my father, and went to my mother, and my mother said, Tony, you went and saw him, mom? I said, yes, mama. And if that the man of my father, we know I don't know father. And my mother said, bow. He said, if my mama tell the truth, my brother, he's like a bird to come out of mama. Mama is different. Can you imagine, imagine mama I died? I never confess. And I am the split image of my father. In fact, my brother and sister told me, even before I met daddy, you are the one that look of all of us. You are the one that looks like When I met him, he has taken me and where I come from. So whatever you have done, you can't face no way. You know, sometimes a man, he, he, he goes to kill. And sometimes it's not a home for two weeks. And leave that girl at home and something happened. And you get like a, a metal jacket, like a whisper. And you see only why you look like a metal jacket. But you want it to come. And, and every time you look at you, she starts she's not bad. And she looks at the right people. No, I don't know. And, 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 and you cannot, he said that you confess, you cannot free your pure. Here, man, here, truth put out all your spine and life. You know something? 
when I said, Mama, I'm never with me. It's with that I like. We were silent in the middle of five minutes. No matter who it is. So it's best while you're alive. We make it right. Right? We make it right. You are 70 and you are 60 enough. No matter how you're supposed to say, you say, I'm sorry, you are a big man, 70. You can't manage your girl. And you take that away and you go to your heart. You do not know the story of a man who wanted to make two young girls nice. He said, This old man he was about 75. He wanted to make two young girls feel nice. So he overdosed himself. And when they found him, you heard about Colin Check, when he died, he was smiling. <laughs> so you, you, you get to certain age. My brothers and sisters, you have to just know that my first wife was secular. I live for my children. I'm my grandchildren. Yeah. They have to know, I have to know that a part of him, a part of him yearns for that. Why hey? not? Even though Rastaman was in shock when he had his life, he said, No, I did that so many hurt. Here's a part of us that he yearns I'm so happy today that I came, that I was officially a minister for my God. He's gone on before, we are left behind. And the time that God is going to afford you and me on this life, on this earth, is to use the time to make it right. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for every life. He has caused family members and friends to have traveled from overseas, from different places in Jamaica. To meet today in the sanctuary to celebrate this life. We thank you for the contribution you made to the development of this family. We give today the family an opportunity to grieve the one is lost. But they are also encouraged to make it right with you. I pray today that that is for shared who have resonated with everybody, particularly those who have not yet fully committed their lives to you, and they will see the importance of doing it before it's too late. We pray again that you continue to bless the Marie family and bless all those who share. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Amen. We have a few more things that we want to leave out for the internet. Well, I want to take the eulogy, and this is going to be done by Kevin Hunter's son and Melissa Hunter's daughter. So these two persons will come in and give us an idea as to who Mr. Andrews. Oh, you go down side, man. You go down the side. You go down the side. Good morning, everyone. To our family, friends, loved ones, and members of the church, we thank you dearly for being with us today. Many have traveled great distance to be here today. We are gathered to celebrate the life of our beloved father, Mr. Henry George Hunter. He was a man of wisdom, strong values. He dearly loved his family, believed in healthy eating, and had an unwavering love for and dedication to the Lord. Our father was a God-fearing man and could take every opportunity. He had to share greatness and mercies of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Andrew George Hunter 
was the first born of the union of Bersoy Hunter and Emil Hunter. On the 19th of February, 1948, in Portman, St. Thomas, Jamaica. As the eldest of the brothers and sisters, our father strived to be an exemplary leader and positive example for all of his siblings, in whom he loved very much. You could hear the love and admiration he had for his siblings when he would speak of them. Henry attended the Poor Primary School where he was successful in the first and second year in the Jamaica local examination. After leaving school, he gained employment at the St. Thomas Parish Council for a short period. Henry later gained employment at the Ministry of Labor, Morin Bay, as a recruiting officer. He was later transferred to Kingston, where he got the opportunity to further his education. He attended the St. George's College Extension, where he was successful in his GCO GCO level examinations. After leaving the Ministry of Labor, he went to Guatemala Bay, Cuba, where he worked for a period of, of time. Then he returned to Jamaica, where he gained employment at Bowdoin Estate Limited as a transport manager. He was also interested in politics, and therefore he was one of the main persons involved in five thousand campaign in which she was successful in being the member of parliament for eastern st thomas a few months later life made a turn and henry decided to migrate to canada in 1976. during his time in canada Henry explored various careers. Our father was a person of great ambition, willing to try different roles, for example, real estate with Century 21 and REMAX, life insurance, and also sales, including a natural nutrition supplement with Shackley, and also working in uh, the automotive parts industry at MCO. Many people, especially us as the children, are grateful to him for guiding us in our in his past time, Henry regarded, as you know, the warm and hot seasons in Canada are short, so he made the most of it, as it yielded a harvest of vegetables such as corn, tomatoes, kalaloo, cucumbers, and bees. Our father was a family-oriented person. We would often visit our New York family. I remember fond memories of fun times driving to New York City on long weekends in the blue Volvo. My father said that the color royal blue is a strong color. During our New York visits, I recall my father and other relatives knocking dominoes, listening to music, laughing. He had a very, very jolly laugh. And also, they would share a story. Our father loved to cook. He loved to cook, steam fish, and rice very often very often. Why? Because fish is good for the brain, he would say. He would tell us of the importance of taking our vitamins, B12 to be specific. Remember to boost up your immune system, read to nourish our mind, especially reading the Bible, and excelling academically. You must study your book, he would say. Recently, I recall a discussion with my father about health. He would often say, eat your vegetables, not too much of the meat business. Any time a discussion started about health, I knew it was time to set aside at least 30 to 45 minutes for him to talk and for me to listen. He introduced me to a book called Eat to Live. The next day, my phone was ringing. I looked at the display. It said, Dad. Good afternoon, Melissa. It's your father calling, he said. I replied, hello dad, how are you? He asked, you ordered a book yet? 
let's just say, right after that reminder call, I ordered the book. Our father had an amazing memory. He would never miss a birthday, Christmas, or a New Year's phone call. There would be a 6 a.m. phone call on birthdays to ensure he caught us before we left for school or work. He also remembered stats, figures, and dates of importance, of, uh, of importance from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s like it was present day. After years of living in Canada, our father decided to return to his homeland of Jamaica as the Lord had called him to do so. He was dedicated to serving the Lord through his ministry. He participated in many roles at church. In 2001, he was ordained as a minister. He taught us and others the importance of trusting in the Lord and the power of prayer, even when he began to get sick. He continued to pray and call us to ensure we were okay. On the evening of Monday, November 14, 2022, Henry G. Hunter was called to the Lord. He showed strength and love right up to his last days with us. We miss you, Dad. We love you, and we appreciate the knowledge and love you have shown us and others over the years. He is survived by his wife, Isis, his five, sorry, his children, Kevin and Melissa, three grandchildren, five brothers, five sisters, and many nieces and nephews and cousins. May his soul rest in peace. Today, as we celebrate our dear father, Henry George Hunter, we are confident that he will remain in our heart and mind. On behalf of the Hunter family, we would like to express our sincere appreciation to you for being here with us today. May the Lord bless and keep you. Thank you. Amen. Yes, these are strong children like that. Yeah, man. Thanksgiving service of this nature. People have to come up here and hold persons. But that talk of well, they have their shoulders as to where that is. We're not going to have the pride for the family and the record of one verse of the recession of him. Hopefully we complete. Um, there was some that was bypassed when the world was coming together. We will see the other versions of this session that we'll get to the um, grief side. Um, Pray for the family. I'm going to ask the church to stand and the family members to remain seated. Family members, remain seated. Those are our family members. I'm going to ask you to stand. Alright, I want you to turn to the person beside you. Actually, I've got you back. Tell the person I've got you back. Yeah. So if you need a shoulder to cry on, here is it. I got you. Yeah, so no one will want to cry until the job done. Alright? So, obviously, the passing of Edward brought the closer together. It's an awesome opportunity to see family members that you have not seen for and this guy. You know, so I just know you will enjoy the moment with each other. And enjoy the moment, you know, because you don't know when you are here today and before you start the funeral, you are gone. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the Baptist family. Thank you for the harmony and unity that characterize this family. And as they have ensured that Every, every Thanksgiving service was a successful one. We know many times it's after the burial, the reality of the loved one passing starts to sink in. But give them the grace and strength that they would need even then. May the father's family be a family where each of them will live for others, but all of them will live for you. 
I pray that you keep that those who came down from God to share in this celebratory exercise. When the time comes for them to return, take them back home safely. I pray that you'll cover them. I dedicate them coming the understanding out to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let everyone say. Amen. And ask the parents to come forward. And while they do that, we are going to receive one verse of blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Over the four days of glory divine, hear of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in the Spirit. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a four days of glory divine.